So we're trying to solve this problem by finding our little f of t right there. So we did our start on the complicated side, which is the left. So how, or what is the next step to do? So we wrote in terms of sines and cosines. Well, there was so I could just subtract these two. I could common denominator. So it's pretty easy to subtract the two fractions. One hint is there's only one fraction on the right side. So the fact that we have two fractions, might as well just turn into one. So we'll add them together with common denominator. So this is definitely not that close to what we're looking for. So it's not terribly helpful. What can we do next? Can't write in terms of sines and cosines. There's really no factoring to do. There's only two left. You should get your strategies out so you can see what they are. Most of them are not applicable right here. I think there's only one that I can think of. There's none that you can think of because you're not looking at your list. Multiply by conjugate over conjugate. I think that's a reasonable move to make here. There's only one possible conjugate, which is one plus sine. So that's the only conjugate that is possible here. Now this multiply by conjugate over conjugate is probably not something that's on the tip of your brain. So this is one of the strategies that you want to pay attention to because it's not one of the ones you're going to normally think of. So don't, I recommend to not uh, distribute where you don't have conjugate. So I'm only going to distribute in the numerator. So 1 times 1 is 1. Outside inside terms are going to cancel. We're going to get minus sine x plus sine x. And negative sine times positive sine is negative sine squared x. Now, one of the main reasons we do this is because we're going to turn 1 minus sine squared into something similar. And we're going to use the identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And subtract sine squared. This leaves us with cos squared equals 1 minus sine squared. So we're going to take out 1 minus sine squared and replace by cos squared. And now I have cosine squared on the top, which is cosine times cosine. So one of those is going to cancel with cos x. So one of the cos squares is going to cancel with cosine x. And we're going to be left with cos x over 1 plus sine x. Still not what we want. However, at least. The fraction looks like a over b plus c. It's the wrong things everywhere, but at least there's two on the bottom and one in the top. So we're getting sort of close to the right form. So what can I multiply by to turn cosine into 1? What can I multiply cosine by to turn it into a 1? How about 1 over cos x? Multiply that by cosine, and I'll get 1. Now, that would be completely illegal to just multiply by 1 over cos x. So what we're going to do is change this around. So we're multiplying by 1, because that cancels out to 1. So I was motivated by wanting to turn cosine into 1. So I just said, all right, we'll just divide by cosine. but that would not be correct algebra, so the way I remedy that is I just multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over cosine. <clears throat> so this does turn numerator into 1. Now on the denominator, we're going to distribute to both terms. 
So this is 1 over cos x plus sine x over cos x. Sine over cosine is tangent. That sounds familiar. And what is 1 over cosine? Almost cosecant, regular secant. So the missing piece is secant right there. That's the little f of x that we were hunting for at the very beginning, somewhere way up there. So these ones are a little bit tougher because you only sort of know what the final form is going to look like. And you have to get into that form and then figure out what is in the, in this case, f of x position. So it's not a, uh, it's not so clear as to what final form you should get this into. You're going to use the same five strategies though. Now in this case, you're always going to start on the side uh, with things that you know, and then you're trying to get to the unknown side. So on, even if the unknown side looks more complicated, you're going to start on the side with where you know everything. Should I look back at web work for more questions? Um, can we do one from 10.4? 10 10.4? 10 uh, did you have a different question? So f of x is the secant x right there. So it's the function that's in the same position as that secant function right there. No. All right, that was ten three. Was it ten three? Or the any one from ten four. The double half? I think we had a question just like this in, in class. Okay. Was this the one you were thinking about? Yeah. So on this one, they want to know about cosine alpha over 2. So you want to use the formula for the alpha over 2. Okay. Um, and then I believe it all relates back to cosine alpha. Okay. So most questions in 10.4, you're going to, at some point, use the formula from the formula page the double or the half angle. You're going to use at least one of those on almost every question in here. So you definitely want that formula sheet available. When I give you your quiz Thursday or Friday, the back of your quiz is going to be the formula page, so you can keep that. Well, when I give you back your quiz, you can keep the, your quiz, which will have the formula page printed out on it. Uh, but always have that available when you're doing your homework so that you know where to look on the page for different formulas. So this one is another half angle. So this one is a little bit more tricky right here. So I'll set this one up. So first thing, sign 15 degrees. We don't know about 15 degrees, but we know about 30 degrees. So we know what sine 30 degrees is and cosine 30 degrees.
All right, so this is to figure out A, figure out B. So first thing, 15 degrees is half of 30 degrees. So I'm going to write down the sine alpha over 2 is plus or minus square root 1 minus cos alpha over 2. So this is off the formula page. So alpha over 2 is going to be 15 degrees, and that makes regular alpha 30 degrees. So half of our angle is 15, and then our angle will be 30. So sine 15 degrees equals plus or minus square root 1 minus cos 30 degrees over 2. Now do I choose plus or minus given that I'm looking for sine 15 degrees. What quadrant is 15 degrees in? Mm -hmm. So it's in quadrant one, everybody's positive in quadrant one. So we're going for the positive square root here. And all we need is cosine 30 degrees. So what is cosine 30 degrees? So 30 degrees is pi over 6. So what is cosine of pi over 6? So how do we figure out trig values in quadrant 1? That was your first quiz question. You're going to redraw quadrant 1. Hopefully you can draw quadrant 1 with the right xy values. So it will be square root 3 over 2. This is the, oh, it's a really bad quadrant. There we go. So there's the pi over 4, pi over 6, and pi over 3. There's our pi over 6. And we got square root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And that square root 3 over 2 is the cosine value. It's the x coordinate at pi over 6. So what's different between this form that I have at the bottom of the screen and the original form that they're asking for? One of the main differences is that one half is out front. So it would be illegal to just go, ah, oh, well, I'll just write times a half right here. I can't just multiply by a half. So there's a few ways to accomplish this. I could multiply by half. And then by 2, that's not going to change anything. So that's one way to accomplish it. <clears throat> the half I'm going to leave outside. And the 2 I'm going to multiply inside the square root. Now when you multiply inside a square root, or you move the 2 inside the square root, it moves in as 2 squared. And the reason that happens, if you have a times b to the c, you can rewrite this as a to the 1 over c power times b to the c. So that's the property I used right over here. So moving into a half power, so it goes in as the reciprocal, which is squared. And now we got 2 squared. So one of the 2's will cancel with the 2 on the bottom. And we have that. And then just distribute our 2. And we should get this form right here. So there's a lot of arithmetic that felt like you were doing algebra on this one to change the form around.
So, are there any other? There's probably lots of other homework questions. But are there any other identity questions? So your quiz, I'm going to have you prove an identity, and it's going to be similar to the homework questions in your textbook. So I'll write down, actually, let's go look at your textbook right now. So here are some good problems. This is page 782. Number 22 to 38. That was page 782. 